you can make stepping stones from your obstacles. This is Ken Harvey. When Christina Guerrero was growing up, people would laugh at her when she proclaimed that someday she would be a TV star, but the daughter of an addict father would not let poverty and frequent moves deter her from her dream. Her mom was afraid because her husband's drug and alcohol addictions frequently put her children and her own life in jeopardy. So after 17 years, she finally left him once and for all. Christina's mom moved back to Washington State with her five children, where she could work the fields to supplement her small secretarial salary. Christina was older by then and could also help some in the fields. In high school, Christina also began working as a waitress to earn the money she would need to go to college, and she was the first in her family to attend a university, starting with the University of Washington. UW does not have a broadcasting program, however, so Christina arranged to serve a low-paid internship with Como TV. She worked as a gopher and didn't make much money, but she began developing mentors who would teach her and work with her on camera. Against her mother's wishes, Christina decided she needed to go not only to a university with a broadcasting program, but she had to go to the very best. So she moved to California, intent on finishing her college degree at the University of Southern California. USC is a private college and costs lots of money. But Christina was able to get student loans and believed she would be able to pay back the loans once she achieved a good TV job. She lacked some of the qualifications to get into USC, however, so she went to another college for a while, worked as a waitress, and used her Como TV contacts to get a gopher-type job at the Fox affiliate in L.A. There again, she developed mentors who would teach her and allow her to practice on camera. She finally got into USC, and the Fox affiliate began giving her more responsibilities in response to her hard work, enthusiasm, and growing skills. Before she graduated, a cable network, CTV, hired her part-time to be a co-host on a talk show called The Rub, and at USC she became the host of an interview show on the university TV station. By the time she was 25, Christina was host of her own talk show, Good Day SA, at the top TV station in San Antonio, making $100,000 a year. Three years later, Christina joined the Inside Edition show as a national TV reporter, making about double her San Antonio pay. She enjoyed it, but didn't feel it was quite the right fit for her. So she jumped at the opportunity to join the staff of the newer, hipper, and rapidly growing e-entertainment organization, where she is a correspondent and part-time host. She works alongside American Idol's Ryan Seacrest, and has interviewed most of the Hollywood stars she used to just dream about. Christina happens to be my stepdaughter now, but I didn't meet her mom until Chris was already in college. Our similar careers and interests are purely coincidental. She already knew intuitively what I spent years studying and researching. Enthusiasm, hard work, sacrifice, and a positive attitude can overcome a lot of other weaknesses, and internships and mentors can provide valuable practical experience and open doors of opportunity. And finally, a college education is the best investment a person can make. No one can take your education away from you, and it will pay financial dividends throughout your life. Christina urges students to make the necessary sacrifices while they are young to achieve their dreams and to never, ever give up. Former migrant student Consuelo Kickbush, born and raised in a tiny barrio in Laredo, Texas, overcame the challenges of poverty, discrimination, and illiteracy to become the highest-ranking Hispanic woman in the U.S. Army. I was that child who was struggling, the retired lieutenant colonel says, but she was inspired by her parents' words and their sacrifices. They migrated to work the fields and lived in a boxcar for five years because they saw what others couldn't see, she says. Her parents could see what their family could achieve through sacrifice and opportunities in America. Education is the American dream, her father said, and Consuelo grew up excited to go to school, but educators were not so excited to have her. We educators can take the role of being gatekeepers or dream makers, Consuelo says. Which will we choose? Educators in Consuelo's life frequently chose to be gatekeepers. Luckily, her parents built her self-confidence adequately to handle the attack. I was an Aztec princess because that's what my father said, and he never lied, she recalls. In a little two-bedroom house, I was given a sense of pride. She recounts the day a teacher felt compelled to cut Consuelo down a notch by telling her she was poor and from a terrible neighborhood. She ran home to tell her father, but he refused to accept that label. You are not poor, he told Consuelo. You are rich. You have values. You have culture. You have tradition. You have opportunity. All children have the right to the American dream. You are not poor, and don't you forget it. When Consuelo declared her wealth the next day, she was punished for lying. Consuelo made it through elementary and middle school by being socially promoted, she says. In high school, she was put into general math and learned how to operate a cash register instead of into algebra, and she was counseled to register for other vocational rather than college prep classes. Teachers expected poor Latino students to drop out, she says. They could not see past poverty to promise and potential. 
When Consuelo tried to attend a college orientation session, her counselor pulled her out and asked her, Who do you think you are? Don't you know your classes don't lead to college? He told her that she and other Latino girls were good for two things, getting pregnant and having babies. You just go around here parading and look for someone to support you, he said. The sad thing was that that counselor was Hispanic. Her next counselor, Mr. Cooper, was a white Ivy League graduate. He was the one who saved Consuelo from the destiny her prior counselor predicted. Do you know you're brilliant, Mr. Cooper told her. You are just the innocent victim of a poor educational system. You can get anything you want in life. I believe in you. Will you believe in yourself? And Mr. Cooper helped Consuelo get into college. Once there, she joined the ROTC program. She thought it was a social club. But after overcoming the miles of running, the cliff repelling, and the good old boy network, she began rising through the ranks of the military. Seven of her nine siblings also joined the military. It reflected their father's commitment to duty, honor, and country. Ironically, by working 15 hours a day to support his large family, her father never learned English and never achieved his American citizenship, but he taught his children to be passionate about America. Lieutenant Colonel Kickbush grew to become a successful role model for a community, breaking barriers and setting records in the Army's combat support services. But it took her mother to help her realize what was really important in life. I had begun to assimilate, Consuelo says. I wanted a condo. I wanted a German-made car. I wanted, I wanted. The lieutenant colonel was just two years from becoming a general when her ailing mother came to visit. I'm coming because this is my last visit with you, her mother told the rising military star. This is my dying wish. A real leader is a servant who creates the path for others. I learned from my mother that day, the maid who cleaned other people's toilets and made them sparkle. I learned nothing is worth doing that does not stand the test of time, Consuelo says. When she went to her superior to let him know that she was leaving the military, he was shocked and curious as to why she would leave her fast-track military career. I'm going home to fight for children, she told him. Acknowledged now as a charismatic, passionate, and entertaining speaker, the retired lieutenant colonel has carried her powerful message to over a million parents, educators, and community leaders. She was honored by President Bush in a large gathering in the White House as winner of the 2006 Hispanic Heritage Award. She urges students to believe we can all make our dreams come true, to not give up hope, rather take charge of your lives and make a real difference in your families and communities.